Now let's understand one more last, I think it is last years. So we have seen uniform, normal, and then this is last one, which is exponential. So do anyone remember by the way, what was the uniform? Uniform, like we will revise today also, but uniform is basically, it says that uh, the PDF is same. I mean, FX is just C between A to B, something like this, right? Between A to B, which means that this is PDF. This is, let's suppose FX, it is C from A to B. And to solve this uniform kind of questions, do we need, uh, do we need to, to solve with the integration or we can directly work with the rectangles? Yes. Yes, that is right. So we can work with the rectangles directly. Take it because, uh, because it is better to directly work with the rectangles. Now let's just see this exponential distribution. Now, uh, basically in the exponential distribution, if any function is following this kind of formula, which means, uh, sorry, if any random variable is having this kind of PDF, which is looking like this lambda into e power minus lambda x if x is greater than or equal to zero otherwise otherwise if x is less than zero otherwise it is zero now first tell me what are the parameters in this pdf parameters means apart from the x because x value will be given to me parameter is lambda so you will say exponential some people write something like this exponent like actually uh, the notation is like this that you write the distribution name which is exponential distribution and then then in the bracket you write the parameters which means if I ask you that, how do you denote the normal distribution? You will say maybe normal you can write. Otherwise people just write like this. Then you will say normal distribution. If you want to denote by the normal distribution, mu and sigma are parameters. How to denote maybe uniform distribution? In the uniform distribution, A and B are the parameters. People just like write like this. How to denote uh, maybe position distribution? In the position distribution, lambda is the parameter. So pe people denote like this. How to denote exponential distribution? People write like this. Maybe x, uh, exp, lambda, something like this, right? And what, what else is remaining? How to denote binomial distribution? Then people write like this. What are the parameters? Anyone remember for the binomial distribution? Binomial was the discrete or continuous? It was a discrete. So in the binomial distribution, we said the parameters are number of trials. It was n c k into p or then like n c k into p power k into one minus p power n minus k, something like this. So in this, tell me what are the unknowns? See the k, k should be given, right? Or k is a parameter or should be given? Is a parameter, uh, sorry, it should be given, right? Because uh, reason being is that k is the value of x. Since k is value of x, it will be given to you. Okay. So k will be given to you and then n and p are the parameters. So, I mean, this, this is just a general notation like people write in this way. You do not need to actually, I mean, I don't know if you need to know it or not, but yeah, they may, they may write uh, some, some kind of these notations in the question, but anyway, like you will be, you will be habitual of these kind of notations after your MTech. I mean, during the MTech, but yes, this is the kind of notation that, that the people or the books use. Okay. So if some random variable is having this kind of PDF, then we call that this is said to be exponential random variable. Now uh, let's just calculate the expectation variance of this exponential random variable. So expectation, like I, I'm, I'm not going to calculate, but uh, how do we calculate? Do you remember any formula from minus infinity to infinity? So if you do it, then it is going to be one upon lambda. Just remember it. Okay. So because the doing the calculation is not worthy, just remember that expectation is one upon lambda and variance is one upon lambda squared. Taken. Is this okay to everyone? Now let's see that, that uh, what they can ask in the exponential distribution. See, first of all, these continuous distribution and these things, I mean, continuous distribution and the no, uh, whatever in the continuous distribution, which is normal distribution, especially, or the exponential distribution, they, uh, they have not asked any question. I think they have just asked one or two questions. These are not important as per the gate. I mean, uh, they, it, they may ask the question. It is not like they, they cannot ask the question because it is in the syllabus, but it is just like that. This is less important compared to the discrete random variable. Discrete random variables are very important expectation or, or variance of the discrete random variable or different kind of things that we have studied in the random variable. Everything is important, but they just give you the less priority to the continuous random variable. Can anyone think that why, why they are giving the less priority to the continuous random variable? Reason being is that, uh, like, uh, this is basically, they, they do not want to test you on the mathematics much. They want to test you on the logic. 
Okay, I mean they want to test you on the computer science, computer science logics, not on the integration and differentiation. These these logics. Even if you go for the calculus, and then in the calculus itself, like uh, they do not ask much tough questions. So they they do not ask uh, calculus questions much, right? I mean any any hard question they do not generally ask on the calculus. So that is why this continuous also deals with the integration and these things uh, much much uh, with the calculus. So that is why they do not ask these questions, and they think that if someone is good in the discrete. And if he is willing to learn, then he can learn the continuous later also after in the MTech. So they they the gate exam is just an eligible exam to push you to the top college. So if you are good with some logic, maybe discrete random variable, expectation, these things, then they think that okay, you are good to go. It it is it is an exam which which tells you that you are good to go, right? So which means if they they understand that okay, if you are if you are able to solve the discrete mathematics, the discrete random variable questions, then then you are good to go at least. You can understand the continuous later. That's the I I think I think that's the mindset that they are having. I may be wrong, but I think that's the mindset they they are having. So anyway, let's just solve some question in, in the continuous uh, in the exponential uh, random variable. Let's suppose that x is a exponential random variable. And expo uh, this expectation of x is given to be zero point five, right? And let's suppose that uh, they are asking expectation of some maybe maybe some other random variable that is a function of x, maybe x plus three square. Okay, let me just write the expectation of x uh, is one upon lambda, I think, right? One upon lambda. Can anyone solve this question? See, this will be expectation of x square plus nine plus six uh, x, right? Which is expectation of x square plus nine plus this is okay, right? Because nine expectation of nine is just nine because it is a constant expectation of x. Now this is given to us, which is zero point five. That is okay into six plus nine. That is okay. Is this also given? That's the trick here. Is this also given? Just see if this is given. Expectation of x square. Have they given this? See, they 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 have not given the CDF. Obviously, they will not give you the CDF, and they will not ask you to integrate uh, integrate the x square f x and these things. But there is something that you can you can find out the expectation of x square using the given information. Yes, they have given the expectation, which means they have given the one upon lambda, which means they have given the lambda, which means they have given the variance also. Right? Given the expectation, first find out the variance. I mean, first find out uh, find out the lambda. Lambda is one upon zero point five, which is just two. Lambda is two. And then they have given the variance, which is one upon four. That you know that expectation of x square minus expectation of x whole square is one upon four. That's that's what they have given, right? Because they have given the variance. I mean, they have given the lambda. From here, you can calculate the variance. Now, expectation of x square will be. That's what you are interested in to find out. It will be one upon four plus expectation of x whole square, which means one upon two whole square, which is again one upon four. That is one upon two. So here they have given this is one upon two. Are you able to do it? One upon two plus nine plus three. Uh, that is uh, nine plus three is twelve, and then twelve point five. ठीक है? Twelve point five is the final answer. Now the only trick that we needed to apply is this: how to calculate this expectation of x square. And to calculate this expectation of x square, they have given you the expectation of x. Given the expectation of x, you can calculate the expectation of x square. Let's just calculate. Let's just solve more questions. Let's see that how to solve this question. They 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 are saying that let x and y the independent random variables both are exponential with lambda equal to two. Both are exponential uh, random variable and they are independent also. Now let's just find the expectation variance of u and uh, this w. Expectation of u will be one upon two into expectation of x plus expectation of y. So I think we can do it. This is two plus two four, and then four divided by two. This is two only, right? 
I hope that is easy because this lambda is given to you. Okay. Is this okay? Or there is some flaw? I think there is one mistake that I just did. Can anyone tell me? No, that's that's fine. This lambda is two, then expectation is two or one upon two. Expectation of x is one upon two. Yeah. And expectation of y is also one upon two. Which means it will be one upon two plus one upon two, one upon two into one upon two plus one upon two, which is just one upon two. Right? Take it. Now let's just calculate the variance of u. So variance of u will be variance of this whole thing, which is one by two x plus y. And then since they're independent, you can you can separate it out and you can do it from here also. But uh, do we need to do all of this or we can just do from the lambda? I think we can just do from the lambda. It is easy. So lambda is this, uh, which means I mean lambda is two, and then it will be. I mean, for here also lambda is 2, then it will be 1 upon lambda square, which means 1 upon 4. Okay. We can directly do using the lambda. Otherwise, if you want, since x and y are independent, you can you can do using this also. Suppose they say x and y are not independent, then dependent. Then, then can you calculate the variance? Will it be the same or this will be something else? Variance will be same. Okay. However, you calculate the variance will be actually same. Because this lambda, I, once I know the lambda, because see uh, what is happening here. If it is independent, then uh, basically I have not used a dependent or independent anywhere, right? I mean, let's let's not use this formula, and I have not used a dependent or independent anywhere. Do I have used or uh, or or I'm good with uh, directly solving? I think we can directly solve because this formula, this expectation of u, does not need any dependence or independence, right? Expectation of u is always equal to uh, linear. I mean, it is linear. So it does not need any dependence or independence. Once I get the lambda, I'm calculating. So this dependent or independent does not matter to me. Okay. Now expectation and variance for this is fine. Now can you calculate the expectation of W? It will be expectation of, huh, this is interesting. Can you do it? Can anyone tell me what is the expectation of W they are getting? expectation of w is same as expectation of y square so expectation of y is given to be 1 upon lambda which is given to be 1 by 2 that's why the variance of y is also given to us which is 1 by 4 now we know this is expectation of y square minus expectation of y whole square equal to 1 by 4 that is given to us which means expectation of y square, if you want to calculate, this will be 1 by 4 plus expectation of y whole square, which means 1 by 4. No? This is 1 by 2. Were you people able to solve it? This was 1 by 2. Okay. Now, okay, great. So now let's just find out the variance of W. It will be, I think, 1 upon lambda square. So it will be just, I mean, whole square of this. So it is 1 upon 4. Okay. Hmm. okay, so I hope this is fine to everyone. So in the exponential distribution, like uh, the, this is the only possibility that they can ask. They, they can they can just trick you in this expectation of x square and expectation of x. I mean, they will just give you expectation of x. They may, they may ask something which is related to expectation of x square. Okay, and how to calculate the expectation of x square using the variance. So this is just a formula and you do not even need to remember the formula. I'm again saying you do not need to remember the formula for the normal distribution, neither for the exponential distribution. I mean, if you do it, it, it might be beneficial because no one knows that what they can ask, but I don't think that you need, you need to remember the formulas. Okay. You just need to remember these things, expectation and variance. You need to remember this for sure. Okay. Now, can you fill this as a homework? Which means just write the one only. Okay, see these are the parameters that they they have written. Okay, in the uniform, just uh, just do one thing. In the uniform, there is also discrete uniform and continuous uniform. So the parameters in the in the both the uniform, I think A and B, right? In both both the uniform uh, random variable, the parameters are A and B, I think. So you can just adjust this uniform maybe after this position. Let me do it because this is the discrete now. So that is why you just adjust this after this position.
ठीक है एंड देन दिस इज डिस्क्रीट देन देन वॉट वी से दैट वॉट इज द पी एम एफ फॉर दिस वी से आई थिंक वन अपॉन बी माइनस ए बी माइनस ए प्लस वन हाउ मेनी नंबर आर देर बी माइनस ए प्लस वन नंबर आर देर है सो आई थिंक इट इज वन अपॉन बी माइनस ए प्लस वन and every number is having equal probability so i think it is one upon b minus a plus 1 and anyway, we just write all of this pm pmf and pdf i think this is this is a good table that we can fill so that everything is in front of us and just just one last thing that you can do maybe maybe just add one more column where you just write the possible values of k which means here in the bernoulli i think uh, uh, k which means the value that x can take x can take i think only 0 1 Here it can take. Do you, anyone remember? In the binomial, it can take from zero to n. In the position, how much it can take? Can anyone remember? It can take from. Since it is discrete, it cannot take the continuous value. It, it can take from zero one to three to n. Is this correct? In the position? No, right? It is basically anything till infinity. What about the what about the uniform? In the uniform, I think it can take from a to b. Right, a a plus one like this. In the normal distribution, what are the possible values that x can take? I think x can take any value, right? Yeah, minus infinity to minus plus infinity. X can take any value, and in the exponential also. Uh, exponential actually uh, x cannot take any value. I mean, uh, if x is less than zero, then it is defined to be zero. Okay. I mean, any value which means like uh, if x is greater than equal to zero, then then only it is positive. So if you want, you can just write like this. Okay. That if x is greater than zero, then it is positive. I mean, just write the, uh, the write the um, write the values where where x can take the non-zero values. Okay, can take non-zero values. Can be non-zero. It can be non-zero only at x greater than equal to zero. And in this case, that uh, x can take any value from a to b, from a to b. Okay, just write the x values also. Now with this, we are. Glad to announce that we have actually covered just one part of it. Now we will be ne needing eight or nine more lectures to cover another part, which is statistics. So we have covered one part, which is random variable uniform. I mean, in the random variable, we have uniform. Uniform is continuous and discrete both. Continuous and discrete both. Okay. And normal, which is continuous. Exponential is continuous. This is discrete. This is discrete. So we have covered just probabilities. And this standard deviation, conditional probability based theorem, we have covered it. Now the another part, which is statics. Statics means mean, mode, median. These these comes under statics part. Let's just see this. Okay, what is mean, mode, median? I'm not sure if they have asked any question in this because this is recently added portion. I think they have added it just two years back. So I'm if I'm if I'm able to recall, then they have just added in 2021. Just two years back, they have added this mean, mode, median part. I think. Or maybe 2020. Not, not, not lesser than uh, you know two to three years. Uh, at max, it is 2020. Not lesser than 2020. They have very added this very recently. So let's just see what is mean mode median. 